the St. John of Damascus Orthodox Educational Initiative presents the Damascene Podcast. Hello everyone, my name is Vasilios Asimakos and I'm one of the teachers at the St. John of Damascus Orthodox Educational Initiative, where I've been blessed for the last three years to teach the composition classes for the program, and I have some thoughts to share, but before I do, I just wanted to wish everyone Christ is born. Glorify Him, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, and Blessed St. Basil's Day. Early on in my employment, Father John urged me to read a composition of my own patron saint, St. Basil the Great, entitled, Address to Young Men on the Right Use of Greek Literature. Thank God for this assignment. In his essay, The Blessed Hierarch, St. Basil, ever the teacher, instructs on how to read not the Greek Apostolic Fathers, nor his divinely inspired Greek contemporaries, but the ancient Greek poets, figures such as Homer, Hesiod, and Solon. That's right. One of the Orthodox Church's three hierarchs, St. Basil the Great, who tirelessly defended the Church against heresy, who spoke on the nature of the Most Holy Trinity, whose divine liturgy we still serve 1,600 years later, accepted that the study of Greek pagan literature was not only allowable, but beneficial. Beneficial, that is, if used rightly. But what is the right use of Greek literature? St. Basil teaches that, quote, since the life to come is to be attained through virtue, end quote, virtue can be sought out in the works of these pagan poets. He gives the example of Homer's Odysseus, whose virtue outshines his poor condition and who inspires the rich Cephalenians, or Kephalenians, to forsake their riches and emulate him. If a pagan poet thus recounts, quote, the words and deeds of good men, one should both love and imitate them, earnestly emulating such conduct, end quote. If, conversely, they observe vice, such as in the character of Zeus, whose squalid resume consists of, quote, things of which one cannot speak, even in connection with brutes, without blushing, end quote, they must, of course, disregard it. He uses the powerful analogy of the bee to illustrate his point. Now then, he says, altogether after the manner of bees must we use these writings, for the bees do not visit all the flowers without discrimination, nor indeed do they seek to carry away entire those upon which they light, but rather having taken so much as is adapted to their needs, they let the rest go. So we, if wise, shall take from heathen books whatever befits us and is allied to the truth, and shall pass over the rest. End quote. The question might arise, what is our pagan literature? Some of it is, of course, the same. The Iliad, the works of Plato, and the stories of ancient Greek history, including the lives of Socrates, Pericles, Diogenes, and the rest. But overall, St. Basil is commenting on any literature that exists in his day which isn't composed by church writers. In our own time, that would include any non-Orthodox example of fine art, including, by the way, film and television. So what should our strategy be now in the 21st century? The answer is, of course, the same. We must extract the good and disregard the bad. For someone who has studied literature for years, and most of it non-Orthodox, I was grateful for the clarity St. Basil provided. I did not need to burn these books or the emotional bridges connecting to them. I could admire the priorities of Plato, the insight of Shakespeare, and the hope of Tolkien. The works of these authors cannot compare with the salvific compositions of the Holy Spirit through the apostles and fathers of the Church, of course, but they can provoke us to think about the heavenly and godly, and point us to holy writings, and influence us to do God's work. Conversely, though, St. Basil also gives us a difficult assignment. We must intellectually discard anything in the arts that might lead us down an anti-Christian path. That can be a tall order, because these harmful characters, actions, and ideas are often, especially in modern works, the most fun, the most pleasing, the most easy, the most popular, or the most tempting. Yet we must discerningly identify their sinfulness. 
In order to distinguish the right use of non-Orthodox literature, there is another essential ingredient. What is it? St. Basil says that we, quote, should study those acts of noble men which coincide with the teachings of the scriptures, end quote. It follows, then, that we need to know the teachings of the scriptures and the faith they serve. So let us commit today to learning the scriptures better, to learning our faith better, so that we might become attentive students of the universal teacher, St. Basil, and good and faithful servants of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you so much for listening. I have showed you all things, how that so laboring ye ought to support the weak, and to remember the words of the Lord Jesus, how he said, It is more blessed to give than to receive. Acts chapter 20, verse 35. To donate to the initiative, please visit orthodoxlearninggoc.com slash donate. May God bless you. Have mercy on